Well, hello, my friends, and welcome back to CWK Live every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm your host, Dan Zare, thrilled to be talking Star Wars with each and every one of you. Time to have some coffee and talk some Star Wars. How about it? Let's bring in our friends, Minta. This is the way. It's CWK Day. Thank you so much, Minta, for being here. Blake, hello, CWK family. And we're accurately, hey, CWK family. Blake, Great to see you, man. Mary is here. Happy Bad Batch Eve. Hello, Mary. Awesome to see you. And Ben, too. Good evening to you, Ben. Terry, good evening, everyone. I'll add my list later tonight, preparing for a big snow in Missouri. Terry, we are, too. But it seems like we're always on the same page with the weather. I guess we're not. We're far away from. We're not that far away from each other. So good luck, my friend. Uh, hoping um, the Tauntaun... Uh, does not freeze for you and all is good. Hello, Daniel. Good to see you too, Daniel. Well, it's nice to see all of you always. It's a fun show. It's a great show because you are here chatting with me. So I am going to, oh, let's see. Mita says we're doing the same thing here for Vermont. Second one this month. It's been crazy weather. There is no doubt about that. There's no, but no, it isn't crazy. How awesome the Bad Batch is. Ben says he drove home in a snowstorm in Ohio Sunday. Stay home if you can, Terry. Oh, gosh. Ben, I'm glad you made it, dude. That is no joke. Lori is here. Hello, Lori. Good to see you, Lori. Blake says they're preparing for more sunburn in Florida this week. Well, Blake, put on that sunscreen, pal. Put on that sunscreen. All right, so on today's show, we are going to look at your top five moments from Star Wars The Bad Batch Faster. There's a little bit of Star Wars Celebration news. And, of course, your comments and questions. So let's take a look at what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week. Hi. What happened to my video? Uh, I don't know. Oh, well. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> uh, yes, I know. Uh, David is here. What's up, man? Wanted to jump in and spend time with my CWK family. Been away too long. Well, it's good to see you, dude. David, uh, how are you? David had a great week. He was able to chat with, um, well, a pretty serious author. I would say Timothy Zahn. Aaron and David got to talk with Timothy Zahn in Orlando. And that ended up being really, really awesome. Really, really awesome. Uh, so be sure to listen to Star Wars Reactions for that. Sorry, I'm, I'm confused because my video wasn't working. I don't know why. Uh, Mita says, send send some of that Florida weather our way. Yeah, use your powers, dude. But again, I don't want to uh, uh, short sight it. David's interview, David, I'm sorry, Aaron's interview with Timothy Zahn is fabulous. So you will love it. And Star Wars Reactions is one of the best Star Wars podcasts out there. So be sure to follow it and listen to all that great stuff. Lori says, we got snow again in California. Lori, where are you in California? That's That's pretty wild. Mary says, Blake, some lows in the 40s and 50s at the end of this week. That's right. Mary is a Floridian now officially as well. So that's pretty fun. I, I do love seeing everybody interacting uh, online, and um, especially if you're members of, of the Coffee with Kenobi family, this big family that we have that's our big fans of the Star Wars community, and seeing everyone planning and spending time together. Just, I think it's so cool. It's so cool. All right. Uh, so that's not exactly true. It's not coming up next. But I do want to show you. Uh, pour over this week. We have been having fun the last two weeks on pour over. We've got our top 10 singers. This was inspired by Rolling Stone's list of the top 100 singers. It came out January 1st. So we weighed in on it this week. We have singers uh, one through five, or we go, of course, in reverse chronological order, five through one. And here is a bit of what Corey had to say this week on CWK Pour Over. So, that's my number four. That's cool. That's awesome. Okay, we're on the number three. Um, number three. Yeah, this this person I, I discovered while listening to Radio Kids. Uh, back when I didn't get to choose what I listened to, uh, it just came on, <laughs> and I was forced to listen to it. Uh, but in a good way. Uh, this was on the uh, classic radio station, classic rock radio station uh, in my local Peoria, Illinois. I think it's still 9955 GLO. GLO. Right? Yep. There you go. Mm, yep. Um, so, yeah, this is how I discovered this person. <laughs> and, and over the years, it was in high school, I believe. Um, and, of course, this 
this band obviously can't be mistaken. It's all over the place. But it's none other than, well, I'll, I'll, I'll read my description here. Uh, this is a person who has a rock opera voice and almost shouts out his breathy words. Hair's great with a whiny guitar solo. Ooh. This is none other than... Cliffhanger! Yeah, so I'm sure you could probably guess who Corey's, uh, one of Corey's favorites is, but I wanted to put that there to show you that how much fun we have on a CWK Pro Over, and people are asking me pretty regularly, which is neat. Hey, what is CWK Pro Over? Why isn't it on the coffee with Kenobi Feed? Well, it's because it is a little bit different. You have to be a member of the CWK Alliance to listen to it. And, and actually, uh, more specifically, for five bucks a month, you get access to four exclusive podcasts a week. Uh, and there's also a video option as well. For $10 a month, it's they're really great. Because we get to talk about all kinds of pop culture, Star Wars, all those things. And 10% of your contributions go directly to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. So it's a really, really nice thing. You're able to uh, give back. And I appreciate the support of me too. So that's pretty fun. Let me put the logo for CWK Pour Over up there. Ta-da! Now, let's go ahead and jump into top five for this week. Top five moments from the Bad Batch Faster. The Bad Batch Faster. Uh, oh, by the way, I guess I didn't even do this. Man, I am a mess. I must be thinking about the snow coming in. I must be doing that. Uh, I promise you Star Wars Celebration News. You probably saw they announced the guests officially for Star Wars Celebration London, which is, of course, uh, not that far away. In fact, it is, I have it written down here, 73 days away. But so far, the first round of guests they've announced are Anthony Daniels, Ashley Eckstein, D. Bradley Baker, Giancarlo Esposito, Indira Varma, who is from Obi-Wan Kenobi, Matt Lanter, and Vivian Lyra Blair, also from Obi-Wan Kenobi. So that is absolutely awesome. And later... Uh, this week, in fact, let me get the exact date for you so you know, if you were one of the people that wanted to go to Celebration in London, if you're in the area or you're planning on making a, a trip over there, uh, on January 27th at 5 o'clock uh, GMT time, uh, they are going to have additional single day tickets released. So if you want to go to Celebration and do not have your ticket yet, there is your option. This is the way to do that, in fact. Ross is here late to the party. Howdy, friends. Hello, Ross. Good to see you, buddy. We're just you're just in time because we're gonna do your top five moments from Star Wars: The Bad Batch faster this week. I was joined on uh, coffee with Kenobi by Jeff McGee of Marvin Dog Media and Star Wars Splash Page, and of course my son Mason's there. I had a great time breaking it down, and now we're going to do our top fives. And it was pretty helpful for me to re-listen to Coffee with Kenobi. I mean, you re I recorded it and edited it, but I re-listened to it right before this uh, to kind of refresh my memory on a couple of things. I think this episode is a lot of fun, and I think it benefits from a second viewing because I think the funny moments happen are even funnier. So let's see what you thought as far as your top five goes. Number five for me, speaking of funny, is humor. I, I laughed a lot during this episode, even more the second time, and I think that is a really important aspect of this because you know sometimes when you know the jokes are coming you don't laugh as hard but then there are certain times when they're really good and well paced out and timed and scripted and delivered that is even more fun the humor in this is a blast oh pun intended by the way number five for mary is the race announcer and introducing all the racers with tech at the end of the list tech that's it just tech? Yeah, I like. Oh, that's fun. I forgot about that line too, Mary. That's a great line. Ben says Mason's doing a great job on those weekly episodes. Well, Ben, thank you so much, dude. I will certainly pass it along to him. I really appreciate you saying that. Meet is number five. The tone of the episode was much lighter than the previous one, that's for sure. Which isn't a bad thing, considering the season has been pretty dark so far, and it was fun to watch. Fun. Yes, it was fun. And I think that's an important aspect of this that I hope that they never lose. David says, Wrecker's humor throughout the show. Love that big guy. I do too, David. And isn't it cool that he doesn't just fall into this like 
one note, as Jeff McGee said, bull in the China shop, but he's continually, uh, he's thoughtful and uh, he's very charming. And I appreciate that. So good call. Ross number five, number five is Sidarian Scaleback. Maleki tells us Sid's full name and also warns Omega Tech and Wrecker that she shouldn't be trusted. Yes. Yes, she is problematic for sure. Hello, Jason. Jason's number five, the Mantel Mix. Oh, good call. Nerf Nuggets, Spectacled Spectator, Riot Racing, Sidarian Scaleback. Lots of fun alliteration in this episode. You are right about that. And I didn't even, I'm ashamed I didn't even pick that up right away. So right on. Henrik's number five. Hello, Henrik. Is Sid and Malegi making the deal? Oh, yeah. That was cool. Number five for Blake. I was going to make humor also my first pick. I found it hit or miss throughout the episode, but I felt it was very George Lucas prequel era, which I appreciate. I agree with that, especially with the racing too, and I'm sure we'll get to that. Ben's number five is a growing distrust of Sid. She seems to be getting the batch involved in more selfish jobs or low-level jobs. I feel this theme is setting up for some good storylines later that will lead to great character moments for Sid and the Bad Batch. Yes, I I think so too. It's, it's certainly, uh, they always deliver on how they tell their stories and, and how they kind of spread them out and pace them out. So good call, Ben. Let's go ahead and jump into number four. Number four for me is Omega's loyalty. I'm sure I've talked about this before. I, I, you know, I love Omega. I got to write about her on stars.com, as I mentioned previously, because I do think she's the most valuable member of the Bad Batch. And her loyalty to Sid, of course she's loyal to her, her brothers in the Bad Batch, but her loyalty to Sid, I found that to be particularly important. Not necessarily for Sid. Sid's kind of wearing on me a little bit, but I like that Omega... When she has her people, she has you, and she will do anything to help you and to protect you. And you can tell by Sid's reaction, especially at the end of the episode, that she's not used to that. So it's a really nice, really nice moment. Okay, let's see. Minta's number four is more Sid. It was interesting digging into her past, even if it was just a few minutes. When Malegi told the Bad Batch to watch their backs with Sid, it makes you wonder. If we're going to see more of her personal life emerge this season. And that is a good question, Mita. I A lot of people have been asking me about that, and I see a lot of people talking about that. It, it does make it very interesting, for sure. David's 4 is the callbacks to Episode 1, Pod Racing, also a callback to Episode 2, the chase through Coruscant, especially through those tunnels. That is a, that's a good call, David. A very good call. And it just it's just a nice little homage to that, isn't it? Daniel's five, sit in her skeptical background, more light shed on it, and really testing the trust. Yeah, she's really stretching the limits of credulity for herself, I think, for us as an audience. Now, do Wrecker and Tech feel the way? I don't know. Should they? That's also a good question. Let's see. Uh, Ross is five. Safatama, uh, a real, another great rough around the edges location full of mischief. Action and danger. And that's exactly how I would describe you, Ross. Full of mischief, action, and danger. So that's good. Good combo. Mary's number four. This is the first time we've heard this uh, character. Probably won't be the last. Teo, another snarky droid. Ben Schwartz was great. Ben Schwartz was great. I love his vocal work. Jason's number four. Great to hear the voice of Ernie Hudson. Especially when Malaki says, get him in the crunch. I know. I like, I like how his voice sounds. And whether, as Jeff said on Coffee with Kenobi this week, whether it is Voice modulation, or he's just performing a character. It's just really cool. Henrik's number four is Omega negotiating to save Sid, which I would, I was thinking of when I made my number four, so I'm happy to have the same one as you, Henrik. Number four for Ben. Humor, the Observer getting shot. Teo, warned him shortly, the announcer questioning Tech's name. At first, this humor didn't feel natural for Star Wars, but I love this humor in other shows, so it worked better on my second watch. And I agree with you, Ben, and I, I mentioned this earlier. I certainly mentioned on Coffee with Kenobi this week. Uh, a second watch certainly does benefit this one. Number four for Blake is the character design of Teo. I may have gotten that name written wrong. It looks good to me. The fact that he had an interesting design with a flipping face was something I haven't seen before in Star Wars. You're right. And I, I was thinking about that, too, although I couldn't put my finger on it, but you're right. It's kind of a new, a new look. Number four for Daniel. The throwback to Phantom Menace and the pod racing was fun. 
It was. It was cool. Really cool. And I saw David Collins, so they didn't even use any sounds from the Phantom Menace for the sound design in this one, which is pretty neat. Number three for me is Tech's strategy. What I like about this is that Tech never sees problems. He sees solutions. Well, that's not true. I mean, he, he's aware when there's a problem, but he doesn't panic. Or if he does, he keeps it really close to the vest. But he has strategy. He's watching the racers. He's mapping things out. He says it's called strategy, to which records us know it's called losing, which was very funny. Um, well, that would have been a good time for a laugh track. Oh, I don't have any laugh sound effects here. Oh, well. Uh, but so then the fact that he's able to navigate and figure out how he's going to win and the fact that he makes this happen, I don't know. I just think it's cool. I love action in Star Wars, but I like when people use their brains to make things happen. Uh, Outthinking people is just an important part of being a hero, of, of what we can do as individuals. And I just really am glad that they spotlighted that. I thought that was fabulous. Number three for David. The beauty and color of the animation. So, so good stoles from Count Jeff McGee. Yes, indeed. The Count. Um, you have to ask that story. I don't know if he's ever told that story in a podcast, but he does have a Count thing on his name. It's like this wild thing. It's great. But yes, I agree with you, David. And thank you for uh, reminding us of what Jeff said on the show this week. But yeah, the coloring on this episode is just absolutely gorgeous. It really, truly is. I mean, it's animation. To expect it to look good, but this is particularly good, I think. Uh, I mean, to three, Omega's loyalty to not just the Bad Batch, but for Sid as well. She has more empathy than her counterpart Boba did, his younger self, anyway. Oh boy, they're so different, aren't they? I mean, it's nature versus nurture, perhaps, but that that's a really interesting topic that you brought up there, Minta. Jason 3, Tech, I know what I'm doing. It's called Strategy, Record, No. It's called Losing. And Henrik 3, Teo being all sassy. Mason liked... That too, and, and Mason kept saying that it reminded him of Sonic because, of course, uh, Ben Swartz voices both Teo and Sonic the Hedgehog in the newer films. Mary's 3, like many have already said, the throwback to the prequels with the Riot Race and going through the tunnels, all of the droid racers were great. I actually like these racers better than the, the pod racers. So there's that. But that's just me. Number 3 for Ross, getting to experience Malegi. A Doughton? Doughton? Uh, he may be a gangster, but he appears to have a code and some smarts. Yeah, I, I like that he's got a code. That he, So he would be like in Dungeons and Dragons lawful lawful neutral or I don't know. Um, or chaotic neutral, chaotic good. I don't know. We have to ask Tom Gross about that. But yeah, that's a good point. Blake's three. The fact that Tech was a highlight of the episode. I don't think the episode showed anything new for him or made him grow, but it was great to see an episode where he is a highlight. Yes, and Tom and I actually talked about that at school recently, about how, I don't know, we learned a lot of new stuff about him, but it was cool to see him spotlighted because he's a cool character. Number three for Daniel. Overall, a fun filler episode and a nice break since the last one. Kind of like Teo and all his human-like comments. Was not sad when he got wrecked, though. <laughs> I wasn't either. He was driving me batty. But he definitely was fun and served a purpose. Ben's three tail. Where are my arms and legs? I regret nothing. Besides his humor, I love this hubris. Ben Schwartz is the worst. Sorry, Parks and Rex reference. Nice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, that was the funny part that Jeff pointed out too. Jason says I would say lawfully neutral works for Malegi. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Because when you're lawful, at least it implies that you stick to whatever your your deal is, so to speak. All right, let's go to number two. Number two for me is the ambiguous end. The way the episode ends, where you're just not really sure what to think of Sid and where she stands with the Bad Batch. You know, is she someone that they can continue to, you know, trust at arm's length? Uh, or is the warning from Malegi going to be something that's going to come back and cause a lot of Serious conflict and problems. I like that it introduces this question, but I like that it's still a complete episode in and of itself. But just putting that in the back of our minds, I think, is cool. I always like storytelling when you have a beginning, a middle, and an end. If you can throw in little wrinkles out there that we don't necessarily have to have the answers to ever, but when it introduces the question, it just causes some great debate and conversation. So I really like that ending, that ambiguous ending, a lot. 
Number two for David. The reveal about Sid's penchant for not being trustworthy. Bad Batch has got to watch their backs. Exactly. So I'm I'm glad I came up with the same one as you, David. I feel like I'm in good company there. Number two for Ross. The Riot Racing, another great installment of the racing cultures from system to system. The racing sequences were beautiful. Indeed, they were. And I like how you said racing culture because that's very apt. Mintas too. I love how it was a nod to the pod racing scene from the Phantom Menace. And Teo was even sassier than K2. It's true. Even when he was run over a second time, especially his last line, I regret nothing. I definitely prefer K2, but I, I know exactly what you're saying. Mary's number two. My, Maleki telling the Bad Batch to watch their backs with Sid. Foreshadowing. Ernie Hudson was so good. He was. He was really good. And, and I'm glad that mine matched yours as well, Mary. So that's cool. Ernie Hudson is great. Jason's number two. Omega stepping in to negotiate with Malegi and try to save Sid. Her concern for other people, no matter how shady they are, continues. Oh, yes. There you go. And Eric's number two is Teo being cocky. I just know you and Mason will get along so well, Henrik. Blake's too. The racing and track design. I like the fact that the pod racing is done throughout the galaxy with a slightly different look. And the design of the course within the city was superb. It was. It, it, they always feel like these are actual... I mean, we talked on the show about how it's like Mario Kart. And I think that fits here. And, and the fact that you caught up on... The, you point out the design is pretty neat. Daniel's number two, the Malegi character was interesting. And of course, the voicing by Ernie Hudson was great. Wonder if we will see him again. I hope so. And when he first walks out, he's so large. And he makes Wrecker look small. And makes you think, uh-oh. Number two for Ben. Once again, Omega shows that her heart is in the right place. People like to use the double or nothing line to get her out of the hole that they dug for themselves. But she uses it to get Sid out of a hole that Sid dug for herself. Beautiful. Awesome. Another reason why you need to listen to Ben's podcast, Star Wars Bros. Love it. All right. Let's get to number one. Number one for our examination of Faster for me. The audience blast. Look, I don't usually pick. Usually I like to pick something more cerebral or introspective for number one. But when that random alien gets blasted out of nowhere and he's looking around and he just collapses and they basically say on the internet loudspeaker, um, you know, we're not responsible for accidents. I laughed so hard and it was definitely dark humor uh, where they were like death or a serious injury is used to to elicit laughter from the audience. But it was funny. Like it, 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 it was a legitimate LOL situation for me. So I put it in my number one, and I stand by that. <laughs> it's silly, but hey, it was fun. Mary's number one tech during the race being so technical and strategic. But the best part was after he won and gets a standing ovation. Was that a small smile we saw on his face? I know, wasn't that cool? The animation on that is just so, so nice. I caught that too. Uh, let's see. Means is one. Seeing Tech get some much-needed attention was a nice change of pace. He proved to his team and strangers around him that he's capable of racing and other skills. Not just Tech issues, no pun intended. Uh, but it, it's okay. I'm just going to pretend like there is a pun intended because you are pretty clever. Either way, that's a good call. Number one for Ross is Tech being the hero. He not only saves Sid, but he also gets his name chanted by the crowd. It was fun having Echo and Hunter on a separate mission. Yeah, that was neat. He seemed really touched by that. David's number one is the focus on tech and his forced smile. Like, oh, Mary and David are totally, look at those Floridians just matching up. Is that the first time smile we've seen from tech? Uh, that's a good question. It's certainly got to be one of the few. Jason's number one is tech realizing the problematic pattern, more alliteration of having to help Sid get out of trouble. Hopefully, he's starting to understand Echo's point of view about needing to do more to fight the Empire. Hendrick's number one is tech. Winning the race, and it was exciting, for sure. Uh, let's see. Ben's number one is Tech steps up. I love the attention he is getting, but he also gets Sid to show some rare gratitude, which, as you said, rare. Does not happen very much. Daniel, Blake's number one is the hint that Sid can't be trusted, something I think a lot of us had in mind already, but to hear it said finally, to only have half the team makes me wonder if it can lead to some conflict within the batch in the future. Oh, gosh. I hope not, but I totally... I hear you, man. Daniels on one, I agree with Blake regarding the track. Love that it was called Riot Racing with obviously no holds barred. 
Tech was great in the episode, and he re- really got to see him realize he can make a difference and folks appreciating him. Yeah, I, I like that too. Like, he doesn't have a lot of pretense or hubris, uh, but he's not a robot. He, yes, he's a clone, but he's still human. And seeing him like that, I thought, was really, really fun. Well, it was fun talking about this episode with all of you. What's next week? Well, what's the title of next week's episode of The Bad Batch? Well, we know from stars.com, and it's called Entombed. Because that is an ominous name. I wonder what's going to happen there. We'll find out uh, tomorrow on Disney+. Plus. So that's great, right? Well, let's um, transition from that and jump into Ask Dan Z. Wow, my hair is short in those videos. I probably say that every week. All right. Uh, so I didn't forget about trivia. I didn't I didn't put trivia down. I know we're long overdue for trivia, and I have a lot of fun getting those ready for you. Uh, but I don't have any trivia this week. But don't worry. It's going to come back. And I like reading you questions that have already been done. But I also like writing questions. And honestly, because grad school started and I've got a lot of reading to do, I'm loving it, by the way. It's so fun. Uh, that's why there was no trivia, but I didn't forget about trivia. We will certainly circle back on trivia in the very near future, possibly next week, assuming I get a chance to get some questions written down, but either way, good times are going to be had. So, uh, Minta says, knowing that you played Dungeons and Dragons, have you seen the latest trailer for the movie? And did you have any thoughts on it? You know, I... I love Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, I just played it today at, at Game Club. I am the dungeon master at our school, one of the dungeon masters. And I had a fun little campaign that I'm working on with my students. I haven't seen the new trailer. I saw the first one. And I'm debating not watching it, Mita, because I just want to go in fresh. I know Tom's going to be so excited about it, but I'm really excited about it. And I'm, I'm guessing you are too. Uh, you will be happy to know, Mita. I know you're a big fan of this. I've only seen the first episode, but I started watching Wednesday. Oh my gosh, what a great show. Like I I part of me thought, eh, I'll just probably skip this one, but my wife and I watched it last weekend and I loved it. So cool. Do you have any fun interviews lined up after the bad batch is over? Uh the short answer for that is yes, I do. More to come, my friend. Blake, I'm sure you've already put it out there, but what are your plans for celebration this year? I can't believe it's coming up so soon. Hope it's streamed again. So uh that is a good question. Uh, celebration plans for this year are still very much in flux. Uh, but once I know more about that, I will be happy to let you know. And if I'm able to make it, I will certainly try to bring you along on social media and on the podcast. Mary, not sure if I heard you say this or not, but is there going to be a podcast stage of celebration? If so, will you be on it? Well, they don't have, they have something a little bit different this year. They're doing, uh, I don't remember the technical, I applied for it, but it was something like, uh, it's like the fan. It's not the fan stage. That's what I was the host of last time. It's, uh, oh gosh, because they don't have media applications. They don't have a podcast stage, but they have like a stage set up for podcasts, for YouTube people, for different fans. And uh, it's just like one center thing. But there are going to be, there will be podcasts there. And uh, fingers crossed that I get to be one of the people on the stage. I will let you know. Daniel says, you are so amazing, Dan. So many obligations and juggling it all. Cause, dude, thank you. I'm just a mirror. And I appreciate that. Just, I like uh, challenging myself. And I think it's fun. And it's it's inspiring to try to do and try different things. I don't, I don't like just sort of being complacent. So it, it's a good time. But I appreciate that. And speaking of amazing, look at, look at you, Daniel. Look at your, look at Daniel's profile picture. That, if that Obi-Wan Kenobi doesn't look like it came right out of uh, the Disney Plus series, I mean, I don't know what does. It's really good. Uh, so kudos, dude. And thank you again. Uh, Ross, this Wednesday is incredible. Glad you're both enjoying it. It's really, it's fun for us both to find something that uh, we like um, in the same way because I'm much more genre-based and she's more steeped in, steeped in realism. So this is a fun little mixture. It's certainly not realism, but it is fun. Ben wants to know if I've gotten around to watching Rings of Power yet. I haven't, but it's interesting that you say that. Because for some reason, 
Um, oh, I know why. Mason checked out The Hobbit from his school library, and I started thinking about Tolkien a lot and planning my Dungeons and Dragons campaign for my students. Made me think of that. So Ben, I I definitely still have it on my on my want to list. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me this week on CWK Live. It's always such a pleasure to spend time with all of you having a cup of coffee. You may have heard, because uh, there were a lot of shows last week on Coffee with Kenobi. We had our, we talked about uh, Bad Badge, and I had an interview with the Hasbro team. And at the end of that, I said, you know, I know I always say this is the podcast you're looking for. See you next time, blah, blah. But I can never think of like a really good sign off. And it, the show's been on for almost 10 years. And I still don't feel really great about a really strong sign off. Maybe it's just this is the podcast you're looking for. Maybe that's it. I don't know. What do you think? Meantime, may the force be with you. Thanks again to everybody for joining us. I talked a lot with MEI and Mouse Fan Travel this week. Uh, remember, some of you were talking about this, by the way. Uh, hey, when are we going to go to Florida? Are we going to go a little bit earlier? Are we going to have uh, meets? Are we going to do other stuff on our Galactic Star Cruiser trip? The answer is, yeah, I want to. Uh, we're still working that out. Don't forget that there is a Facebook group. Uh, well, it's not really, well, yeah, it's a Facebook group. It's like an event page for this. But go there with your plans and ideas, and we'll try to make some cool things happen for sure. Uh, Mary, have a great week. See you back here next week for another great conversation. Looking forward to it, Mary. As always, it's going to be a blast because we get to all chat together. Blake says, thank you. Love you, Dan, and love our community. May the force be with you all. Thanks, dude. And keep that sunscreen on. Ross, be well. Have a great week. Ben, great chatting with you again. Thank you so much for making it a great show, Ben. Ross, my pleasure, brother. Uh, Daniel, good to have you here. And David, so nice to see you. Really enjoy listening on CWK Live with my CWK family. Looking forward to being on the Star Cruiser with everyone. Thank you, David. And again, congratulations on chatting with Timothy Zahn. What a wonderful thing. You guys deserve it. And you all deserve to have a great week. Be careful in the snow or the sun or wherever you are. I look forward to chatting with you next week. Until next time, here we go. This is the podcast you're looking for. <laughs>